What's the word, y'all? We are back, and I am here to talk NBA Finals. The two teams that have performed the best and also had the best luck, because y'all know luck. <laughs> luck played a big part in this year's run. I cannot deny that. Are finally here, the two teams. Two out of 30. It's crazy. We The season might be over in just four games. At the max, it's going to be over in, in seven. Which is kind of sad. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to immediately start missing basketball, even though I do love the offseason. Either way, it is set. Suns versus Milwaukee Bucks. I'm excited for this one because I think no matter who wins, I'm going to walk out of here happy for that team. There is one team that gets a little bit more love for me because of a legendary point guard on it. But you get what I'm saying? The Milwaukee Bucks got so many likable dudes on the team. I wouldn't even be mad if they beat Chris Paul in the finals. But it is done. Before we even talk about the finest preview, let me talk about the Atlanta Hawks because they deserve so much respect. They were playing with their superstar player, obviously not completely there. Um, the fact they even played this game was a surprise to me. He was questionable going into it. He warmed up. He was like, you know, I'm going to give it a go because we can't afford to lose this game because we lose this game. The season is over. And me and the guys talked about this on our podcast through the Wire podcast. Go subscribe to that channel. We're like, even if Trey Young is 70%, 60%. It's cool to have him on the court because even at 60%, you know he can knock down some shots and he can be more of a decoy, and that's what he was today. He did try to have some takeover moments, but it just wasn't falling. He struggled to take Brook Lopez off the dribble a few times, so obviously he wasn't completely there, but I, he showed all of the heart. I believe that I believe that Trey Young, this whole season, had went from, maybe I'm, I'm out of touch, I don't really know, but it seemed like he went from a guy that was one of the most hated players in the NBA um, because of the foul drawing thing, um, to just being beloved. And I know he was a villain. He was a villain this entire playoff run. But I do believe that even on top of that, people saw what Trey Young did in his first ever playoff run and can say, I like that kid. I like that kid. You know, he wasn't an all-star this year. Technically, he wasn't an all-star. But I literally think that he could put up the same stats and be in the same position next year. And he'll be an all-star because of this all-star or this, this playoff run put him in a different altitude amongst... NBA fans, amongst GMs, front office people, coaches, NBA players, because they can see what Trey Young could do. Like, the narrative around small point guards are completely changing, which is cool. As, as long as that small point guard has, like, ridiculously, ridiculously, ridiculously amount of talent on the offensive side of the ball. But, like, the main reason why Trey Young fell as far as he did is because, they're like, he's small. He's not going to be able to defend anybody. Little did they know, hey, if you got a good general manager that can put good defenders around here, you can hide him against the majority of the teams. No team is out there five deep with five crazy threats, and you're able to hide Trey Young, which is a W. Um, one of the things I would have liked for the Milwaukee Bucks to do in this series, I can't complain because they're in the finals right now, was try to hunt Trey Young a little bit more, even especially in game number six, right? You can tell he's not 100%. Let's go get at him. Let's get these switches to go at him. They didn't really do that. Maybe some teams wake up next playoff run. I don't really know. But this team showed a crazy, a crazy amount of heart, and you love to see it. Everybody and their mama know that Cam Reddish can hoop. But it's like his big question mark was somewhat of his motor, his dedication to the game. Listen, I need that boy to hoop. <laughs> I ain't even going to lie to you. I ain't even going to lie to you. I need that boy to hoop because I got to. Great, uh, five out of ten autograph. Not, I need him to hoop for my personal investments, and he did, um, which is great. The Atlanta Hawks are in such a good spot. Again, a team that was fourteen and thirty before the hiring, or, or I guess the firing of Lloyd Pierce. Shout out to Lloyd Pierce because he's getting another opportunity as an assistant. I think he might be one of those dudes that might be assistant for another eight years, and he might get another chance. That's great to hear. Um, they bring in a McMillan, established. He, he he gets them an identity, and that was one thing they were maybe lacking in their first 40 or something games. And, of course, gets into the playoffs and just dominate. They're one of the few teams that were here that didn't have to go through an injury-riddled team, a team that was missing – a star player. You Think about it. The New York Knicks were completely healthy for the most part. You know, Mitchell Robinson was there. But for the most part, they had their star players is what I mean. Then they go against Philly. Philly's completely healthy for the most part. And then they go against Milwaukee and they take it to six. And and majority of that was when Milwaukee's star player was healthy. <laughs> you know, so they're in such, such a good spot with so many young pieces. And Click Capella, I'm still counting him as a young piece. I really... Really need to tip my hat to Travis Slank because he built a team that can compete now, but also is growing for the future. Um, enough can be said about young players getting that playoff experience early, right? Because I think this was Chris Vernon that said this on the show. Shout out to Chris Vernon. I don't agree with 
a lot of the stuff Chris Verdon says, but I think that's why I enjoy listening to him talk a lot because I can listen to him and be like, ah, that's not, I don't really think that's true. But this is one thing I do think is true. When a, when a player is in a loser situation for so long, he starts to pick up on those on just really, really bad habits. And the Atlanta Hawks have got to the point where, like, their young players aren't really doing those bad habits to the extent of some team that has been rebuilding for five, six seasons. And that is great, right? DeAndre Hunter was great this playoff run to his injury. Cam Reddish came back from an injury that held him out for so long, and in the biggest stage of his life, he hit six threes and, and helped his team almost fight back to take this to force it to game seven. Trey Young, Trey Young, all of the bad tendencies of Trey Young, uh, bad, it depends on how you define bad, because I can see you saying that the foul draw I think is bad, um, are pretty much gone. You know? You got to think about, like, his entire thing for his first couple years of his career is like, He's a great playmaker, but he turns the ball over way too much for somebody as talented with the ball. He kind of shut all of that down this playoff run, and that's just such a good thing. John Collins came into this season, or even his playoff run, as a guy that we know can potentially get buckets, but how good of a defender is he? He showcased that he could be a two-way player. And one thing that I really enjoyed about John Collins' this playoff run was that he was allowed to run the small ball center when they needed him to, and it didn't look bad. One of the reasons they traded for Click Appell is because they didn't believe that John Collins was going to be in a position to run center and be effective defensively, and he can. Now, I'm not saying Trey Click Appell away because he was such a big part of the defense, but what I'm saying is that when you need to go small, John Collins can do that now. I'm super, super interested to see what his market is this free agency period. The Atlanta Hawks make Every rebuilding team, a team that's here in year three or year four of the rebuild, make all of us jealous because they elevated or or got their timeline done when it, with the rebuild thing. It's time, you know? And I've seen stuff like this happen, not to this extent where they're in the conference finals, but sometimes it can be a, a, a curse because you have such young players and you were this close and maybe you make a trade this offseason that, that tries to accelerate the timeline even more and it backfires. I don't know. I, I think Travis Slink is a super smart guy, and I think he's going to figure it out. But the Atlanta Hawks deserve a lot of praise for being in this position. Shout out to Trey Young and the guys. But now, let's talk about the NBA Finals seven minutes into the video. I, I, my apologies. I got a lot to say. Um, I, I look back on this because I, I vividly remember... Um, the second time the Phoenix Suns and the Milwaukee Bucks played against each other, that was the when P.J. Tucker was on the part of the team now, um, and he got called for a phantom foul with one second to go on Devin Booker. Devin Booker hits a free throw, the misses the second, boom, they win by one. But the first time they played against each other was another crazy game where the Milwaukee Bucks were up by like 15, 16, 17 points, and then the Phoenix Suns fight all the way back and win that win, and I went back to see Drew Holiday didn't play in that game, so maybe it's a wash. But the point I'm trying to make is that the two times these teams have played against each other, it has been decided by a combined two total points, one possession, one Chris Middleton shot away from the Milwaukee Bucks beating them in both games, which is crazy. Um, And, and I hope that this series is good enough to even keep the casual fan interested, right? Me and you are going to watch the finals because we're diehard NBA fans. But for the success of the league, we need this to be one that, that the casual fan will tune into, right? We know that this series, regardless if it ends in four or five, we're here, we're going to watch. But for the sake of the league, we need it to be um, successful because I, I know of some casual fans, um, and that's that's not a knock. I always say this. Being a casual at something is not necessarily a bad thing. I say it all the time. I'm a casual baseball fan. I'm trying to work my way up, but I'm a casual baseball fan, and that's okay. But I've had conversations with casual fans because anytime somebody finds out what I do for a living, they always want to talk about basketball, which is cool. I'm not saying it's wrong. Sometimes I'm not in the mood, I admit. But okay, talking to some casual fans about um, about the playoffs and and. A few of them, actually, because we were in a group, we were like, yeah, I haven't watched much of the playoffs because, well, LeBron's not there or or Kevin Durant is gone or just like all of the star players that have hella fans are gone, right? So the casual fan may not be tuned in, but I hope that since it is the finals, they'll give it a chance. They'll give it a chance because Giannis is one of the best players in the league, but I, I don't know if Giannis has a crazy amount of fans. His style of play is definitely, definitely something I can see people not enjoying. Um, I'm definitely not one of those people that said that he, he's, does, he's unskilled because those people are crazy. I'm looking at you, James Harden and James Harden Hive. You know what I'm saying? Giannis is a skilled player. 
Um, it just so happens he's also a bulldozer. It's a little bit of both. But I'm excited to see what this finals looks like because because Giannis, we don't know, we don't really know about Giannis's timeline, man. Even today, they win a they win the conference finals, and um, people are gonna interview. You got coach getting interviewed. You got Drew Holiday getting interviewed because he had a great game today. Started off very hot, cooled down, but still ended up with 27, nine and nine, I think it said. And C Cash Money Chris took over in the whole third quarter, scoring 20 plus points again. So they're gonna interview, and I'm just waiting for the moment for Giannis to get an interview. He was just like, hey, I'm the 12th man on the roster. Me and the Nassis. The Ant Ante the Kumpo brothers are just the end of the rotation. He didn't even get an interview. Uh, maybe it's just because he didn't play. But either way, his his timeline is one of the the determinant factor of this series, really. Because obviously the Milwaukee Bucks are a, a good team without Giannis. But they're, I don't think they're a good enough team without Giannis to win a series against a pretty much fully healthy Phoenix Suns. Only thing that the Phoenix Suns worry about is if Cam Johnson can get over his cold or stomach virus or whatever, anything but the cold, the, the C word, the, the, the virus that we can't say on this platform where you get demonetized. So obviously they need Giannis to be there and at least be at 80, 90%. Um, I am happy for Giannis though. I, I can say I'm super happy for Giannis because this, this is what a small market needed. Of course, like I said, there's a lot of luck in the Milwaukee Bucks being here right now. I'm not disputing that. But still, this is such a good look for the smaller markets and the team building in the smaller markets. Think about what, how the Milwaukee Bucks did this. They drafted a guy. I think Giannis was outside of the lottery or like the last pick in the lottery. Either way, they drafted a guy relatively late, saw the potential in him, gave him the keys early on. Jason Kidd had this man running point guard. At 6'9", 6'10", he was still growing too. Had him run a point guard, gave him the keys, and allowed him to develop. And once he started to show, oh, snap, this dude has all-star potential. This dude has MVP potential. Let's go do some things. They already had traded for Chris Middleton, which is one of the steals of, of ever. Of ever. Think about that. Chris Middleton has had two of his biggest games in the conference finals, and now they're in the finals because of he put his team on his back. I know he ain't the glamorous type. He ain't super fun to watch at times. He, he, ain't, he ain't even make an all-star game this season, but it's still one of the biggest steals in NBA history, if you ask me, because not only did they win that trade, but they brought a guy that, that, that just made Giannis happy. Did you do you listen to the interviews of, of Giannis after Cash Money Chris took over in game number three? He was like, I'm excited to play with this dude for another decade. You know what I'm saying? So that's automatically an amazing trade because you brought you brought in a guy that can also be a co-star with your guy because they fit together so perfectly, but also keep your guy happy enough that he will stay in a small market of Milwaukee. I've been in Milwaukee a lot of times. It's an hour drive for me. It's, it's a small ass city, bro. It really is a small city in comparison to what Giannis could be going to when it comes to these big markets. So they do that. They draft Giannis. They trade for Chris Middleton, allow those two players to develop together. They draft relatively well. I know Dante DiVincenzo is not here, but he was a good pickup. Pat Connaughton has had his own and off moments, but today he was very good. That's a very good pickup. The Brooke Lopez thing does not get enough credit either. Brought in Brooke Lopez, and people thought he's about to be back to the basket. He, st he started to shoot that thing. Well, I guess he started to shoot the year before he got to Milwaukee, so I guess it's not true. But even that pickup. And then the Drew Holiday is the icing on the cake. They gave up a lot. But you have to remember, they trade. They didn't just trade for Drew Holiday. They traded for Drew Holiday and a sign from Giannis. People, smaller markets should look at this recipe and be like, this is what we have to do. Somebody tweeted at me, there's no coincidence that the two teams that are in the finals made trades to get veteran point guards this season. And that's a fact. Drew Holiday held them down. I know he didn't have a crazy shooting series, but he held them down. You know, Chris Middleton held them down. Giannis, Brooke, Lo Brooke Lopez, Brooke Lopez, I know I didn't get to talk about this, Brooke Lopez last game looked like he was the all-time leader scoring Brooklyn Nets history again. Bobby Portis, crazy eyes, come on, man. So it's just, just, a, just a nice little recipe. It's good to see a smaller market being in this situation. When was the last time, other than the LeBron team with the Cavaliers, that we've seen like a smaller market team be in the finals? And y'all know I don't do no research here, so... You could probably say like last year. It wasn't last season. I'll tell you that much. Miami and L.A. But it's been a minute. It's definitely been a minute. That's mostly because LeBron has been dominating the conference for a decade. But other than that, you know what I'm saying? It's been a, it's been a minute since we've seen a smaller market team be there. And with the Phoenix Suns, I, I've showed them so much praise in these past videos. I don't really need to tell you why um, them being in this finals is amazing for them in the city. I love to see uh, Jay Crowder somewhat chugging a beer after they landed in phoenix what time it had to be like two o'clock in the morning in phoenix when they landed they went to party 
which is good. Chris Paul is sitting on top of the car. Fans are trying to dab him up. He's like, oh, no, dog. I got I got my shot, and I still got the thing. I'm going to stay away from y'all right now. Um, but overall, um, this is the big thing, though, for me. <laughs> I want to go to a finals game. But I looked on those sites that have tickets. I'm not going to say the name unless they're paying me, which they should be. And it's like $1,500 to be in the 300s for the finals. Like I said, Milwaukee's like an hour and a half away from me. I... As, as sad as it sounds, I might not ever see my favorite team in the finals in my lifetime. So is that a good investment just to be at an NBA finals, even if it's not my team? Should I spend that money? Or do I feel confident in our tours Carney showed us to eventually get the Bulls to the finals in my lifetime? I'm going to have to spend that money. I'm going to have to spend that money. Get to see Chris. I got to spend that money. Get to see Chris Paul in the finals game? Oh, that's tough. Well, game one starts on July 6th. Um, I don't even know who are they both the two seed? Were they both the two seed? I don't even remember. Um, so who has the who has game one? Um it doesn't say here. Well, I can look it up after I'm done with this video. Uh, let me know what you think about this finals matchup, man. Uh, Trey Young, man. Best scoring debuts, debuts in NBA history, um, playoff history. And Rick Barry in 1967, he put up 131 points. And then you got Trey Young, 461 points. And then third is Devin Booker at 432 points. And Devin Booker's going to pass Trey Young because Devin Booker still has at least four more games to play. Two star players that had negative connotations associated with their name, and Trey Young and Devin Booker both shut all of the critics up. It's amazing to see. It's amazing to see. All right, that's all I really have to say. Um, I'll be back. I I, I want to do more videos um, about this is where the Bucks fans and the Suns fans can leave if you want to because we're not talking about finals anymore. This is just content creation on this channel. I want to do more off-season type stuff because we're here for 28 of the 30 teams, but I don't really know exactly what I want to do. So let me know. I had an idea. I mentioned this on one of our live streams, the college game streams. Luckily, the college game live is ending. I hated that thing, and I'm not supposed to say that, but here I am saying it again. Um, I mentioned that I wanted to do a series. I guess, I think I wanted to make it like one big old podcast where I talked to a fan associated with the 10 teams that didn't make the play-in, right, 10 teams? However many teams didn't make the play-in, and um, talk about their offseason with that fan. So, like, I already got some green lights from some play some people. I just got to schedule some times. So like, I, a Detroit Piston fan that I know and blowing up on YouTube. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. He agreed to come on to the show. Um, an OKC fan that y'all probably know who I'm talking about agreed. I got to find fans of the other eight organizations. Maybe I'll get Rusty for the Bulls. I feel like me and Rusty have different opinions about the Bulls offseason. I'm just spitballing. All right, I'll see y'all soon.